Hey, welcome back to Damon's Metal Casting. In this video, it marks about the one year mark since I started casting and posting my videos on YouTube. And in this video, I'm gonna explain all the things that I learned to go from something like this, which I first started out, ended up being a short pour, doesn't look so good, to something like this. So here's a Ford Racing V8. It came out of the mold really good. All I did was cut off the gates and polish it, and it came out looking fantastic. So I wanna go ahead and share with you what I've learned over the one year period that I've been casting and posting my videos on YouTube. Also, I wanna thank the people that helped me. There are some people that left great comments on my YouTube channel, and there's also people on my Facebook groups that I belong to, and another gentleman at work that gave me plenty of ideas on how to make my casting better. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, one of the first things, you have to talk about your pattern. You have to have a pattern to cast from. So this is the pattern that I did. This is the 3D printed pattern of the V8 that I made. And I 3D printed it, and then I sanded it, and I sanded it as best as I could. And then I used my two-in-one primer on it, and then after the primer has been dried on the part, I sand that down the best I can. Sometimes I need to do several coats of this to really get a thick enough coat where it covers up all the imperfections. And then I'll also put a high-performance enamel over it. This paint's pretty good. It makes a pretty hard finish on it, and it seems to, to last and be smooth. And to get it even smoother, I go ahead and I use car wax on it. And so far I found out the car wax gives me a really slick finish on my 3D prints. And that's important because whatever texture your 3D print is, that's what's gonna end up on your final casting. So basically, if you don't start off with a good pattern of what you're casting, you're not gonna end up with a good product. So doing those steps helped me get a pretty close to a, a really smooth finish on my castings. All right, let's go ahead and move into the casting. I'm using talc to put on the powder, and also I'm really trying to do diligence in getting it in every crevice so it doesn't stick. The talc works just heads above baby powder. Baby powder is cornstarch, and it just doesn't work that well. To get a really good finish on my parts, I use brand new sand for facing sand. If I reuse old sand, even if I picked out the burn spots of the sand, it still doesn't give as good as finish as using brand new sand for the facing sand. And you don't even have to use a lot. You just use a little bit just to get the part covered, and then you can go ahead and reuse your old sand on top of that to save money. The flask I'm using to pack is one I made myself. I try and make them close to the size of the parts I plan on casting. It just reduces a lot of time. There's no point in packing a ton of sand if you're just making a part that's smaller and doesn't require such a large flask. Flipping the board over and holding the pattern in works really well. If you don't do that and your pattern falls out, good luck putting it back in without damaging your mold. This is baby powder that I'm using. I don't really want to dust myself with talcum powder and get some type of lung cancer, so I go ahead and use baby powder. It works fine for parting, but just not for the finish on the part. This is just reused sand. It's the back of the part and I don't really care what it looks like. I used to use a tapered sprue, little 3D printed pattern to try and use for the sprue and the riser in the back. And um, it's worked out okay, but this is just so much easier and I've gotten pretty much the same results of just making a basin with two large holes and then the aluminum just kind of overflows into the hole and down into the part. Again, I opened it up, and now I'm gonna smash down anything where I see that has possible loose sand. If there's any loose sand floating around in the cavity of your mold, it's gonna cause pitting on your part and just mess your surface finish up. I'm cutting the gates into the sand so that way the aluminum flows from the bottom to the top of the V8. The bottom looks thicker than the top, and so I want the aluminum to retain as much heat as possible before it thins out and starts solidifying. I don't want it to get a short pour on this one. I'm using my compressor to blow out any loose sand. Like I said, if you have loose sand floating around in the cavity of your mold, you're gonna end up having pitting and all sorts of problems. So really get that air in there. Notice I also left the pattern inside of it, so that way I'm not gonna break any of the pattern off with the air. I usually shake the pattern out at the very end. I 
I put a close up and a still into this video so you can see how well that mold turned out. You can even see that little tiny nub where the V and the eight intersect down at the bottom. It came out really well. So that way when I pour the metal in there, it should flow really well through all those cavities. And you can see how smooth that looks in there and there's no chipping out. That's going to make a real good casting. Assembling the flask, I make sure I do it very gently so that way none of the sand breaks loose and falls down into the mold cavity. Yep, and you guessed it. I still got to make those F-bombs for my friends. So here I am trying it again. And this time you can see the two little holes back at the fins that I put for air holes so that way the aluminum could flow back into the fins. And uh, I'm not going to show the whole packing up this, but just enough to let you see how I put it together. There it is getting buttoned up and getting ready to go. Yep, you don't have to tell me. I know my little furnace burns with uh, not enough oxygen in there, and that's why I got that flame coming out of the top. I usually try to hit about 1450 degrees Fahrenheit for my castings and that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the temperature of it. I did this off camera but I leveled that board so that way when I pour that aluminum in there it has the best chance to evenly fill the cavity. When pouring the aluminum, you want the oxide layer to stay on the outside and form a skin and have the good aluminum that hasn't been oxidized to flow in between. And you can kind of see that there. That that's what's happening. All right, here we go with the F-bomb. Let's see how this turned out. Kind of worried here. Yep, came out a good surface, but my two little fins are gone. So uh, I think we're going to have to redesign that because I've been having way too many problems trying to get those little fins in. That one's going to go back in the remelt. And here we go with the V8. Hope it's a lot better. Oh yeah, it is. Look at that finish on it. Real nice and shiny and look like everything filled out. Yep, sides are looking good as the dirt's coming off or the sand's coming off. It's turning out real nice.
All right, and just like usual, I'm going to get on my little Harbor Freight bandsaw and cut the gates off to the part. And cut off as much as I can so there's less cleanup work elsewhere. And then I'm also going to do some milling on it and just mill the back of it flat. And then I'll go ahead and finish that off by going ahead and using the belt sander and getting it completely flat on the back side. And there's a look at the V8 before I go and put it on the buffing wheel. All right, let's check out that V8 one last time. Man, that thing just turned out great. It's a Ford Racing V8 emblem. Turned out really good. Almost looks like it's chromed, but it's just polished aluminum. I have plenty of other videos on my channel, and you can help me out by watching those if you want to learn more about casting. And also, what would help me out is if you subscribed to my channel and gave me a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching my videos. See you next time.